you've all had a very good Christmas and um, Happy New Year to you all. And um, hopefully the CNC machine is um, all working perfectly again with uh, Mac 3. For my first job, I'm going to do a three-dimensional uh, cut in some Tasmanian pine. And uh, it's going to be of a coat of arms, um, which uh, I think you might, might like. So, let's see how we get on with it. So that's the uh, the first cut over with with a, a six millimeter ball mill, and um, it's not a bad representation. But we can uh, make a make a much better job than that. Um, actual fact, I'm going to put a, a three millimeter uh, ball mill in next. Um, just to give you some idea. Um, that was a full run. Uh, let me see, how many lines of code is that? A hundred and thirty... hundred and thirty-eight thousand six hundred and some odd. Um, as you can see, it takes quite a bit of time to uh, run that. Um, in actual fact, the time it took for, for that cut was one hour and thirty-six nearly 37 minutes um, but 
I don't know whether you noticed earlier on, I was running um, the feed rate override, that's what this stands for, FRO. Um, you would have noticed that this was uh, 1500, that's uh, 1500 millimeters per minute of feed rate. Um, well, this was reading three times that. Um, generally through through the, uh, the the run of the cut um, so you can actually alter the speed and feeds uh, on the run uh, so you don't have to get them exactly right in the when you write the program so this is how I determine really the best um, speed and feed for the tool um, I I set it normally at about 25 millimeters, that's one inch um, per second in the program. Um, and I think the RPM uh, I set at this was um, 15,000, which is normal for cutting um, hardwoods and, and, and woods of different sorts. But when you start running the program, Mark 3, you can alter the the feed rate to so, suit the um, cutting conditions if the wood is burning obviously the rpm is too high um, if you you know if you hear the motor struggling you know the rpm is too slow and uh, obviously the feed rate might be a little too fast for it at the rpm so you you alter them until it sounds and looks right at least that's what I do. Now that's with wood. With metal, that's a different thing. Uh, the, the speed and feeds is much, much slower. Um, possibly 10% is what, of what you can cut it in wood. So um, really, it's a, little, a, a lot of people have asked me about speeds and feeds. And um, really and truly, it's a little bit of trial and error. But th there's a bit of a guide for you anyway. Uh, if you're cutting into metal, uh, of course these machines will only do uh, aluminium, brass and copper um, and, and, and metals like that. They will not do steel or cast iron or stainless steel or anything like that at all uh, because they're not built for it. But um, anyway, so it's a little bit of a guide of uh, speed and feeds. So obviously the softer the material, um, the faster you can cut it. Um, harder the material, the slower you have to cut it. <laughs> so, but it's all trial and error, and um, yeah, you'll see, I'll speak a little bit more about that as the uh, as time goes on. Anyway, this is the first cut of this. Now I'm going to uh, alter the tool and um, put a a three, three millimeter bore mill in, and um, we'll bring this up a lot more with a lot more clarity. Okay, so that's the rough, roughing operation done now. Um, and now I've put the three mil ball mill in to do the uh, final finishing cut. Um, but I've noticed there's a slight problem here, which I'm gonna fix by, I've just cut these uh, wedge type clamps you know, to be put in here because the, the base of the nut here, locking nut on the chuck is gonna, come and tr start to grind into here. So I'll put those on in a minute. But there's something else I want to show you. So yes, the VFT control is now up here because for the life of me, I can't get um, Mac 3 to operate the uh, the VFD uh, for, the, for the spindle. So um, I thought, well, bugger it. <laughs> I'll do it again some other time. So uh, I've got the VFD working from here now. Which is fine. But I'm gonna have to put a, a resistor in circuit because it takes such a long time to slow down and stop. And uh, reading the manual, uh, it says that you can actually put a resistor on the VFD to uh, actually pull this up and act as a brake uh, when you're switching it off. So I'll, I'll be doing that. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm loaded up with the, the code and everything ready to go for the finishing cut. Um, so, I suppose now it's just change these now and we'll get on with it. I can actually fully control the feed rate in Mac 3. I just go over it up and down Got it set at 50% the um, the program feed rate. Okay, I just had to stop the machine. Uh, this is actually my fault. Um, you notice it's uh, dug its way through here and here. It, the x-axis has gone out of step uh, because I was um, playing around with the, um, the feed and I put it up to 300% and it just didn't like it. So um, yeah, that was, that was me. So what I've done now is I've reset the x-axis. Uh, zero point and I'm going to start it again. I'm going to cut the whole thing uh, because really this is just a test piece and um, I know I now know not to go to 300% um, or 3 inches or um, 75 millimeters per second because it just doesn't like it. Okay so we'll, we'll, we'll give it another go.
the uh, the finished uh, item. Uh, well, as far as I'm going to go with it anyway. Um, that's really as it comes off the machine. I've um, I've just trimmed off the outer edges, and you'll see there's the mistake here. That was because I was running uh, the machine too fast, and uh, it lost its way in the in the X. Um, and here you'll see there's a little little dimple there, a little bit of a hole. Um, what happened when this happened here, I hit the panic button and stopped it all. Then I manually put it back to uh, the, the center and um, I didn't uh, actually rewind the program in, uh, in Mac, Mac 3. Um, and of course it started the program part way through and it thought, the tool, rather the machine thought, it was on this line. So it just went straight over and dug in. I just managed to hit the panic button again and stopped it and uh, re rewound the pro program. Which is really just a rewind just here. Uh, bar there which re, re puts the program back to the first line. Uh, and then restarted it again and um, of course done the whole thing without a hitch and uh, anyway so what I can go. tell you about Mac 3 is that it is very reliable and very controllable and I do recommend this program and if you are thinking of buying uh, one of these CNC machines or even uh, I suppose a, a, a laser uh, cutting machine or anything of that nature um, have the machine supplied with Mac 3 and operating with Mac 3 with a Mac 3 breakout board in it and ready to plug in and go. If they won't do that for you don't buy the machine or don't buy from uh, them. The only problem I've ever had really um, I had a little problem with the x-axis screw which was probably my fault in the beginning. Um, the only other problem I've had, serious problem, is um, the NC Studio. Sorry, can't recommend it. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this bit of a video from me today and as usual Please subscribe. The top corner up here, little red box that will take you to my YouTube channel. Here, if I can say it. Red box up here that will take you to my YouTube channel where there's plenty for you to have a look at. And there's probably something there that you will like. So, bye for now.